The show is set in the early ages of the Northern Song Dynasty. In the opening scene, the Empress of the Kingdom dies due to old age, and no one is ready to replace her. As a result, the Emperor of the Lao Kingdom launches an attack on the Song Dynasty, disregarding the peace agreements they had signed. They rob innocent civilians and execute them ruthlessly, causing utter chaos. Witnessing this tragedy, a group of individuals led by Cao Feng from the Beggar's Sect come forward to assist the Song Empire. Feng uses his extraordinary martial arts moves to take down the Liao army alone. Later, upon discovering a change in the Liao realm, Feng decides to convey this information to their sect's chief. And by that I mean the chief of their sect, not a chief of sex. On the other hand, we are introduced to a naive prince from the Dali kingdom named Duan Yu, who accidentally comes across a shrine. There, he witnesses an ongoing sword fighting contest between the leaders of the eastern and western branches of the Limitless Sword sect. The eastern leader leader's name is Zuo Zimu, whereas the western leader's name is Shin Shuang King. For the first few minutes of the fight, Shuang King gains the upper hand, but the opponent soon makes a false move, causing the situation to be reversed in the blink of an eye. This results in Zuo Zimu emerging victorious. Duan Yu does not understand the move, and simply finds the incident amusing. When he starts laughing, Zuo Zimu becomes offended and challenges him to a fight. However, Duan Yu refuses straight away, claiming he has better things to do. Meanwhile, a girl girl named Zhang Ling watches all of this from a rooftop and enjoys the spectacle until Duan Yu gets punched. At that point, she intervenes and releases her poisonous mink, causing Zuo Zimu to become weakened and paralyzed. Before leaving, she informs Zuo Zimu's disciples that a rare herb can counteract the poison before it reaches his heart. Elsewhere, Feng arrives at the Shaolin Temple and meets with the chief of the beggar's sect, Wang Jiang Tong, who is currently having a conversation with the abbot named Xuan Tzu. Upon receiving the news of Liao's realm, Wang and Abbot Xuanzi discuss the necessary defensive actions to be taken, and also decide to inform the Dali Kingdom. After the meeting, Feng wanders around the main hall of the Shaolin Temple, and witnesses a series of fights, where a man named Mu Rong Fu emerges victorious against his opponents, one by one. Intrigued, Feng decides to test his skills against Mu Rong Fu, and jumps into the arena. Unlike the previous challengers, he puts up a tough fight, and ultimately utilizes his impressive skill, known as the the 18 subduing dragon palms to overpower Murong Fu, astonishing everyone present. Soon, the result of the battle is relayed to Wang and the other abbots, who commend Fang's exceptional talent. Wang then expresses his intention to pass on his chief position in the beggar's sect to Fang. He claims that the boy is now worthy to become the chief. Hearing this, Abbot Xuanzi is a bit shocked, but he too agrees to support Wang's decision. Later that day, Abbot Xuanzi finds a junior disciple named Xu Xu being bullied by his fellow seniors. It appears that Su Xu, who is known for his kind-hearted nature and aversion to conflict, often becomes a target of bullying among his peers. After the seniors are done with him, Abbot Xuan Si talks to Xu Xu in private and shares with him the knowledge of the 18 subduing dragon palms technique. He explains that although the technique may appear simple, each palm strike possesses varying levels of strength and force. Furthermore, he highlights that Murong Fu was defeated by Fang because he failed to adapt to the fluctuating strength within the technique. Elsewhere, Duan Yu and Zhang Ling stroll through the forest, enjoying each other's company despite their differing views on serving people. Along the way, they come across members of the Shenong sect who are preparing poison in order to confront their adversary, the Limitless Sword Sect. Duan Yu, who is guided by his Buddhist beliefs and aversion to violence, seeks to intervene and halt their actions. As a result, both of them proceed towards the Shenong sect's location and meet with its leader named Sikong Xuan. These names are going to kill me, dude. Duan Yu shares the teachings of Buddha and tries to persuade Sikong Shuan to choose forgiveness over fight. However, Sikong Shuan suspects that Duan Yu and Zhang Lang have ulterior motives and assumes that they are sent by their enemies. As a result, he orders his men to capture them. But to his surprise, Zhang Ling uses her fighting skills to fend off the attackers and eventually deploys her mink, poisoning all of them. That friggin' mink is OP. On the other side, Feng formulates a strategic plan in case the Liao sect makes any suspicious moves. For this, he dispatches his men to the border, instructing them to hide themselves and gather information regarding the increasing presence and camp configuration of the Liao forces. During their discussion, Wang walks in and dismisses everyone else to ensure a private conversation with Fang. He then recounts Fang's past acts of bravery and his willingness to sacrifice himself for the sake of the beggar's sect. Filled with trust and confidence, Wang finally bestows upon Fang the position of chief, making him the ninth generation leader of the sect. In the next scene, we see 
see Duan Yu and Zhang Ling, who are now captured by Sikong Xuan and his men. As the mink bites everyone, <laughs> Sikong Xuan demands the antidote, but Zhang Ling claims that only her father possesses the means to cure the poison. With no options available, Sikong Xuan makes the difficult decision to slice his own hand in order to prevent the further spread of the poison. After this, he compels Duan Yu to ingest a tablet that will apparently cause his internal organs to rupture within a week. Sikong Xuan adds that he will provide its antidote and release Xiang Ling only when Duan Yu returns with her father to heal them. Hearing this, a scared Duan Yu agrees to complete the task. Prior to his departure, Xiang Ling gives him one of her shoes, urging him to present it to her father as proof of his sincerity. She also warns him against revealing his true identity, as it may put his life in danger. Although Duan Yu remains puzzled by her father's hatred toward the Duan sect, he doesn't ask much, as time is running out. Following this, he embarks on his journey, crossing mountains and streams under the cover of darkness. After walking for some time, he notices a couple approaching a nearby lake. In order to remain hidden, he conceals himself behind a large stone and listens in on their conversation. It is revealed that the couple has betrayed their master and fled their kingdom. They go on to discuss a rumor about a former Grand Master who, while walking on a moonlit night, witnessed the silhouette of a dancing sword on a stone wall. This sighting led the sect members to mistakenly believe that he was an immortal. As Duan Yu hears all this, he accidentally makes a noise, capturing the attention of the couple. As a result, they give him chase, prompting Duan Yu to dash deep into the forest. Before long, he arrives at a cliff and, with no other way out, decides to jump. To his luck, he falls inside a cave safely, without any harm to his body. Upon heading inside the cave, Duan Yu comes across a delicate white statue of a fairy made up of jade. He finds it to be so beautiful that he calls it Miss Deity. Beneath the statue, he discovers a message instructing him to perform a thousand kowtows on a futon. Although the task is an extremely difficult one, Duan Yu decides to go through with it. He bows down with the utmost respect and starts performing the kowtows. After an hour, as Duan Yu concludes this act of reverence, he uncovers a silk bag hidden within the futon. Inside it, he finds a message directing him to learn martial arts and and eliminate all members of the carefree sect so that Miss Deity can finally rest in peace. This puts Duan Yu in a tough spot, as he cannot kill anyone being a disciple of Lord Buddha. However, he ultimately decides to carry out the order, as he cannot disobey the commands of the Jade Statue. After all, loyalty to one's god pales in the face of sexy mannequins. Duan Yu then explores the surroundings and discovers that the cave was once a secret library. Unfortunately, he finds no books remaining, leading him to assume that the carefree sect has already vanished. With this assumption in mind, he exits the cave and resumes his journey towards Zhang Ling's location. Meanwhile, at the Beggar's Kingdom, Wang gathers all the members and declares Feng as the new chief of their sect. The decision is met with satisfaction by everyone present, including the elders. In celebration of this occasion, the sect organizes a festive event where everyone indulges in enjoyment. The younger members seize the opportunity to test their skills against Feng and learn from him, while the elders observe with admiration, appreciating his martial arts prowess and noble character. On the other hand, Duan Yu continues his journey through the dense forest, and after a long walk, he comes across a tree bearing a warning that reads, any individual with the surname Duan who enters this valley shall be met with certain death, even Duan the Rock Johnson. But despite this, Duan Yu bravely enters the valley. There, he is greeted by a maid who guides him to the main hall. Shortly after, the empress of the valley, Gan Bao Bao, walks out from the inner hall wearing a smile on her face. However, it quickly fades away when Duan Yu unintentionally reveals his true name. When she inquires for more information about him, he shares that he hails from Lin'an Prefecture in the southern region of the Yangtze River and has been residing in Dali for three years. After hearing these details, Gan Bao Bao swiftly changes the subject and expresses her concern for her daughter. In response, Duan Yu presents Zhang Ling's shoe to her, further increasing her distress. As the two are talking, a loud and scary voice emanates from someone outside the the door. This causes Gan Bao Bao to become scared, while Duan Yu remains uncertain about what is coming towards him. The voice says, Do you smell what the Duan is cooking? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.